so I'm just going to pull that what I've done is I've just pulled some of the slack from the cable up so it's given me a loop that I can just take this off so um, just be careful right if I turn around you see that spring I was on about we don't want to lose that and there's a cup that holds that spring as well which is on actually come out with it so all we've got to do now is unhook this lever which wire jobs always harder with one hand I ask you right so that's out so what I can do now is just pull this cable up and along and then I can pull this one down so I'll cut back in when this is out now we have the rod pulled out which is here you just undo that or if it's got the GP one it's got a pin that goes through there just knock the pin through if they're nylon like that knock the pin through and then just pull it out this way that gives you better access to pull your cable through to come out with no problem um, I noticed inside this uh, I'll explain this when we put it back together again so that needs gluing back in place there should be no damage to your cables you can uh, take off this cover if you like or change it to a different one but that's my switch off there is just a little washer there that needs coming off and saving obviously um, I will be regreasing all of this stuff again and then our switch housing can come off that's job number one done I'm just going to go and get the hydraulic part of the handlebar because we're doing it in segments basically because I don't know where to drill the hole yet there'll be a hole in the side of here or a cut out depending on how it looks with the uh, series two I basically went through here so it the cable comes through at an angle but it's a lot bigger headset than this one so this is where we've got the space on this to route it around and over around the speedo but um, we'll discuss that in a bit which way I'm going to um, put the um, hydraulic hose down so I'll just cut away again and I'll go and get the hydraulic handlebar bits and I'll cut back in again right so here's our hydraulic uh, bit of bling polished up needs a bit more of a clean but that basically just slides on in place of the one that I took off and then we just need to put the mounting screws in to stop it obviously to rotating around what a tip I've done here as well is just use some tape so that it can't leak any hydraulic fluid if you get any hydraulic fluid on your paint basically it'll burn through this is quite old paint now so it will take a, a while to burn through but you know it, precautions it stops it doesn't it so that's, that's my tip anyway so I'm just going to put these two screws back in and align this up and then I'll cut back in again we put our two screws in there at one time I would have put these level you know kept taking it off and on till they were straight but I've grown out of that stupidity so what we need to do now is get our switch, put our cables through and we can put our switch on and put our rod back on and do our throttle again. So um, it's just basically feeding the cables through, keeping them around the back, going under there, going under there and around and plug them back in if we want. <clears throat> They'll be out of the way. I'm just going to cut away again while I put that back in. So I've pulled the, cab the uh, cables from the switch in, they're connected in red to red, blue to blue, uh, orange to orange because that's the AC from this switch and if you notice, if I can find it, that's the AC that's coming up from the loom. So I needed to feed it back into the switch and because this is an AC DC switch you have to join the two cables so that it works. <clears throat> the pilot light and that should be battery on that and obviously they're not with ac so what you're doing in effect is you're putting the ac side where the battery side would have been so you've got power on both sides of the switch so um, when you do one click for just normal ignition there's no lights then the next click you'd have the this light here 
which I've got my thumb, thumb on, the pilot light and your back light and obviously your brake light and then when you put it on to the other switch then you're putting proper AC on and it, that's coming through this orange back to the switch back again and then depending on which way you have this switch high and low beam low beam high beam um, so it just switches between these two and puts the power on either side of the battery and then you've got your earth um, which is that side there going up so and um, the black is backlight pilot light and um, obviously to feed into it and then you've got an earth which um, with Lambrettas go through these screws that hold on the, the roof of the um, the top of the handlebar I should say but all I've got to do now is put the rod back in again um, put a tab of dab of grease I should say not a tab on there so that it runs smoothly and I've got to put the nylon in, in the end that came off with it so I'll cut back in when that's on there's my nylon insert on the end which gives this rod guidance and we've got our washer back in on the top here what the washer does here is it's it's like um, a concave shape so can you see it move when I'm pressing on that so what it's doing is it's acting on this rod we try and push it in with one hand here we go so what what that does is it takes up the slack here it pushes against this so it's in effect doing what I'm doing now pulling it that way I just need to put a dab of grease under there then I can uh, put this back on it is a tad tight at the moment so I'll rotate it a few times see where its sweet spot is and I'll probably have to put a bit of grease in here as well so that it's not catching on the cables it's getting better loosening up but you ideally that should just turn so when you let go of the throttle it should bring back or spring back I should say right so you you're up to date with that so what I'll do is I'm just gonna put some grease in on here and then I'll put back on the throttle lead and uh, throttle cable I should say and cut back in again right so we've got our throttle in we've got our wiring in we've got our switch on so this part of it's done at the moment um, <clears throat> I'm going to have to see at which way I'm routing the cables around so as I said before this has got to come off not just the top two screws that take the mudguard off then I'm going to take the mudguard off and I'll cut back in right so I've got the mudguard off now and as you can see it's quite an easy state of affairs I've just got to undo that cold nut under there hopefully you can see that take the speedo drive out undo the, the two bolts on the side and a lock one which you can't see there so you've got two there and one on the other side drop this disc down um, I've got a new backing plate for it so um, it shouldn't take too long to basically use I'm not changing the bearings on this because they weren't that, that old anyway so all I'm going to do is just change the back plate which uh, I sprayed up and it's uh, just laying in the sun at the moment drying itself off it's quite easy to drop the um, disc, disc off like I say just if this is in your way the damper you can just take the nuts out of here um, I'm going to put a longer nut here anyway because I'm going to put a guide I've got a guide for the, um, the hydraulic pipe which I'm still debating whether to bring it down like I did with the um, Series 2 down behind here because there's, you know, there's nothing here is there there's nothing nothing getting in its way it's got a nice clear route as long as you keep it away from the uh, throttle cable no problem at all which is now fine and dandy um, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm, I will take this off anyway just for the sake of ease but I'll take the nuts off, drop that um, damper away and then I'll undo these nuts and drop the uh, disc out and then I'll um, then it's over to the workshop uh, garage just to um, basically undo the nut on the opposite side and slide all this out 
uh, take out the speedo drive it's, it's about a 10 minute job to do what I'm going to do and then I can put the wheel back in again the hydraulic parts can go in afterwards when when the wheels back on again because I'm going to have to obviously adjust the um, the brakes when, when the back plates on so so far this has taken me probably all in all about an hour um, and I've got the handlebar bit on we've got the handlebar top off ready to to be done the switches in all of the uh, wiring's back in again like I say um, it's it's not a massive job is it you know it's uh, quite a, a straightforward job it's just being methodical and what you're doing so and I'm gonna cut away again I'm sorry to keep cutting in and out and not just keep leaving the camera rolling but um, right what I've done is I've put on the it's only loose it's not tightened the end with these um, Van Hill cables you only need a small hole because it hasn't got this part on on here to come through so it's literally what 10 11 mil hole I'm just gonna mark up there and drill through there in a minute I've decided to run it down the front that way it's not caught anywhere around here it's all loose at the moment because it's got to come back in here and be um, put on the frame it'll look more like that I'll put the hydraulic on dampers on and my supports on I might have to bend that round a bit more yeah I'd, when I get the mud guard on I'll see how much room I've got but um, what I'm gonna do is mark a hole drill through there and then I'll cut back when I've got this on this pipe and then I'm ready more or less to bleed down once I've um, adjusted the static pad which I'll explain in a minute so I've drilled the hole put a grommet in it tightened all this up and we're ready to start bleeding um, what we do is fill this up first obviously cover over any paintwork um, and what I do is I just pull this and let gravity start doing the work before we start bleeding well, that took a little bit longer than I expected it to I've ended up changing the <coughs> Nissan uh, brake lever when you're using these uh, Nissan whatever they are made uh, spacks or whatever make sure the piston is not fully back which is what I've just done I've just spent hours trying to get this to bleed if the pistons too far back you can't get enough fluid behind the piston to move it that is rock solid now perfect wheels turning a bit tight but I've got to loosen off the static pad yet and I've just give it a spray down just in case there was any um, hydraulic fluid anywhere but what I had to do was this was a motorbike one I've had to cut it down under here and put the different screws in but I'm quite happy with that the difference between that and the uh, the silver one the levels here on this one where it's on the other side there I suppose it's better for riding isn't it but you can see that's per perfect level I've just got to clean up in here and start putting it back together again which I might do tomorrow on account of I've spent too many t hours here at the moment the switch goes under here if I want it but it means drilling another hole or at least going through the the aluminium there in where the old brake lever would have gone in through here uh, I'm not too bothered about the front brake so it never had one to begin with all I've got to do here as you can see is I'm going to put some tie wraps on just to hold there and there I've come around and down that might need pushing in a bit more and up I don't know yet till I've uh, got the mud guard on but uh, I'm quite happy with that once it's adjusted it'll, uh, it'll do the job I want it to do I just wanted to show the route that I'm taking the hydraulic through there there's a grommet down the front front of the that's the um, throttle cable 
so it's not interfering with the throttle cable I'm going to tie wrap it here to the frame and down below then it loops around being held away from the wheel and down like you see it's not going to look too stupid I might change this yet yeah, to a pepper pot one got my eye on one of them but that's quite easy to change now it's just to undo that bleed the other one slide it in I've done the donkey work shame the uh, the polished one was a pretty naff but I mean, these things are happen don't they it's always been hot today right so i'll put the top one on i'm going to put one on down below there tie wrap that is just to keep that away so that it is nice i'm going to slide that so it's in position so it don't rub on here then i'm going to be putting the mud guard back on and bits and bobs so i'll cut away while i put the tie wrap around here 